And hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Frazier and Dieter's Business Speed. I'm John Ray, alongside Frazier and Dieter partner, Roger Lesby. Roger, good to see you. Hey, John. Good morning. Good morning. Good, good to see you again. And I know you're glad to have survived the last yeah. of the tax season. Yeah, we got the <laughs> extension period done. It's another tax season under our belt. Uh, we got beautiful autumn we- weather and I got two exciting guests here to, with us today, John. Yeah, we do. Um, yeah, this is, uh, we've been looking forward to this one. So we've got, uh, Taylor McDermott and Andrew Smoltz and they are co-founders of United in Gaming. Taylor, Andrew, welcome. Thanks for having us. Yes, thanks, John. Yeah, th- thanks for being here. So give us a little overview of United in Gaming. Tell us about what you're up to and how you're serving folks out there. Yeah, happy to do that. Um, Taylor here. Uh, United in Gaming was founded last year and incorporated in May of this year. Uh, our goal was to meet an unmet market need for gaming and esports solutions that combine competition with social connectivity and community. We help individuals connect through competitive gameplay and empower real-life communities to use gaming as a way to stay connected, grow, and thrive. Our vision is to become the leading social network for esports and competitive gaming. And Taylor, uh, being the oldest one here, I am amazed at how big the industry is in gaming. Uh, the numbers just just blow me away. And, uh, and the excitement that's there and the energy that's there. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, the global gaming industry itself is something that's sort of flown under the radar until this, these past couple of years when esports has really, you know, put gaming into a different social perspective. And if you look at the global games market, you see $170 billion every year played from phone games to Xbox. PlayStation, PC, across all the consoles, you see $160, $70 billion every year driven into this industry. And esports, the professional outlet of video gaming, has itself become a $1.1 billion industry. If you look at the other major professional sports leagues' revenues, you see the NFL at $13 billion, Major League Baseball at ten. NBA at seven, English Premier League soccer at six, and you see esports making its way into that global scene, and it's really nice to see um, that happening. And you know, Andrew and I are really excited to you know, continue to have an impact with you know the esports association with the, uh, the global population. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we see esports in high schools, we see them in colleges, we see club teams. Uh, this this is really so much larger than any of us really realize. Yeah, it's it's um it's a it's a crazy one actually. Um, you know, if you had told me that that in you know when I was graduating college five to six years ago that uh, we would be entering a world where there would be more esports programs than there are high school football programs in America, um, in high school, which is a stat. Um, you know, they're they're that that's that's fascinating to me, and then. You know, lastly but not least, um, for our generation as we grew up, the pinnacle of viewership for anything was always the Super Bowl. Um, I don't even need to be a, a huge football fan to know that that it trumped every viewing spectacle that was, you know, in American media, um, at least in sports. Um, just up until two years ago, the Super Bowl is no longer the crowning jewel of viewership. The League of Legends World Championship actually had more views than the Super Bowl did, and that's a game that I bet if you asked a hundred Americans, they wouldn't tell you what that, you know, a couple, right. a couple of them would tell you what that is. So it's just crazy to see this climb. It um, is. I mean, it's just incredible. And then with the, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, this has only accelerated this. Absolutely. Uh, you know, COVID has affected every industry and esports has been affected, affected positively and it has been affected ne- negatively. Um, you know, you, see these large events that Andrew's just speaking about, these Super Bowl level events, these spectacles where you sell at arenas and it is, you know, an immersive experience and you don't have that ability to right now, you know, bring people together. There are several uh, conferences that Andrew and I attend that are gaming conferences and, you know, the, the social stigma of, you know, you see your, your the, the kid in the basement of their parents' house. It's no longer that case. People are, you know, gathering and you know sharing experiences together and it, it, that has been limited so 
we're trying to, you know, recreate those experiences in a digital format. And we've seen a lot of success with the digital application of esports and the consumption of esports content um, from people remotely. And there's now just the opportunity to capitalize on the growing viewership with esports because people are at home wanting to know what to do. And if there's content that's being created daily by gaming stars that people love to watch and enjoy, um, people will be driven to that. So talk a little bit about our talk a little bit about our platform because we're not uh, we're not creating a game to to speak of, but our platform is going to allow. Uh, you, you know, you're you're absolutely right. I saw I saw you oh, where, where you're going with that, Roger, and and, and I can fill in. Um, our our platform is not a game. You are you are correct. It's a it's a it's a environment and place where all games can be welcome. Um, players that say you want to uh, host a tournament for your friends, but you don't know where to start, you don't know the rules, um, or you're intimidated by current existing markets. Um, we're building a place that's all inclusive that allows. It's, it's called Gather. Um, dot gg. It's out on the web right now, um, but we're we're uh, actively building and uh, b- uh, building a network of of gamers that showcase the need for strong desire for community, social building. Um, you know, event event management from our spot side to make uh, events less scary or intimidating to join. As it stands, uh, a small stat that I tell everyone that I think is relative to our platform is that we're trying to change the stigma uh, in gaming that um, you have to be elite to just play in tournaments. Um, it's quite the actual opposite. We want uh, people to know that you can play in a tournament regardless of your skill level. You can play with your friends um, and that's what we'll do. We'll we'll take scoring and headaches out of out of the uh, organization um, for the user and the organizer. Yeah, because with that sense of community, you guys are going to be providing uh, leaderboards, but you're also going to be providing the opportunity to maybe play or watch uh, celebrities uh, or um, other other interest groups uh, that might be very very important to me absolutely so you know for example during covid um, we created an event called covid uh, where we connected you know the number one gamer in the world among many other uh, top celebrities and streamers uh, with professional athletes such as rob gronkowski so for those that know we had a guy named tyler blevins aka ninja um, you know play against um, you know, uh, f- fans of, of nature and, uh, you know, casual gamers such as Grob who looked up to a ninja, but in a way communities looked up to him as well for other things. So bridging that gap of sports, music, entertainment and gaming with pop culture, um, in reference to that, you, you hit a nail, um, allowing people to connect with their celebrities, allowing people to feel human, um, because an argument can be made that I can never, ever join an NBA basketball team, but, I can play with my favorite celebrities in a video game, and I feel human doing so. And that I would pay top dollar for. Um, and I think a lot of the, not just America, the world would agree with that statement. Um, uh, if we look at the Drake Ninja stream or if we look at community building, our science and data put points that, that people want to be interconnected in that way. I'll let you finish out that thought if you have something. And I, interconnectivity is absolutely important, and having people understand uh, the other side of the table, understanding esports, understanding that there are traditional sports athletes, you know, the LeBron Jameses and the Rob Gronkowskis, they all love playing video games. Well, they're all in their 20s. I mean, that's what we forget sometimes. <laughs> that, that is absolutely uh, these, true. These major league athletes are, are all in their 20s. They're sitting around the clubhouses. And so what, what are they doing? Right. And, right. and now we've got the ability to project what they're doing and, you know, use their platform to support the growth of esports because it's a passion that they have. And it's something that we can then package and provide to a larger audience and really drive some awareness to esports, but also, you know, provide opportunities for, you know, Braves players. Potentially, we had a partnership with the Atlanta Braves right. and we did an event with their athletes and pro esports athletes. Um, we had an event uh, after a Braves game in uh, uh, August of last year and we had uh, Acuna, Albies, Freed, Soroka, Adeni Hachaparia, Luke Jackson, all playing from the Braves with a professional esports organization. We streamed it live on the front page of Twitch, which is mm-hmm. Amazon's streaming service. 
Um, probably heard, has most people have probably heard of Twitch by now. Um, and we did that. We did a great job. Uh, it was a really great experience. We raised a lot of good money for the Atlanta Braves Foundation. Uh, it was a complete immersive Braves country uh, fortnight night. Right. Uh, we had it on the Georgia Power Pavilion outside the stadium after the game. We had it in sports and social, uh, some of the bars surrounding the uh, in the battery. It was uh, it was exciting, and so creating those types of experiences, introducing Braves players to esports, esports players to the Braves, it was a a good match. And they still, they still talk about that to this day. Actually, yeah, we, uh, up to the well, we'll have to do another one. We're looking forward to the All Star Game. But yeah, in the old days, we were probably playing ping pong in the clubhouse, right? That's it. Uh, I can actually draw from a unique <laughs> unique perspective, actually. Um, I, I I was in a clubhouse for most of my life, and I can tell you that. Um, sorry to anyone that if, if, it's not really confidential information, but all they do is play cards. Right. I mean, it's golf, cards, or fishing. You take your pick, and I'm not kidding. Fishing's in spring training, and then golf and cards are in the regular season. And you're lucky if you get to go golfing. That's just because the manager likes you, and you don't have like a reliever role. Yeah. Well, you have to be a pitcher to play a lot of golf. You got those days <laughs> off. Boom. So I was I was walking a fine line. I didn't want to upset some of my, free, my, my our, our, our our Braves Braves country guys, but I will say that. It has changed now. I mean, if you go into a locker room right now, um, actually, Alabama and LSU verbatim, all the locker, all the individual lockers have it a gaming. It, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty They've sure they got a pull out. They pull it out. You can play. You can mentally take a break, and I'm sure Saban would have a comment about this. But <laughs> uh, you know, football first. But they can play video games. They can take a mental de stress, and the Braves are the same way. To to to, to to say five or ten years ago that would have happened would have been not even in the school of thought. But now we live in a society where the interconnectivity is so important. Um, even the Braves players themselves were – it's something they would do on the weekends, and they love doing it in front of the – you know, they were the number two most watched video that day. So, And I don't know whether you're at liberty to talk about some of the other affiliated community groups that you guys are pursuing. We, we, we can. Yeah, absolutely. No, one of our uh, – at the core of our business is – um, our online platform, gather.gg, as Andrew was just saying, and that helps people find like, like-minded individuals to connect with and compete with and, you know, have conversations and, uh, you know, just, but the B2B side of what we're doing and, and it, like it's a social connectivity. So there are ecosystems out there right now, brands that want to enter into gaming and esports and associate their community, their current existing population into a connective, interesting experience. And gaming has really shown itself to be that, uh, you know, that at the you know, top level of people's minds right now is gaming is associated with all these positive things. And we are creating a white label solution that creates an ecosystem for a brand or community to host their own competitive gaming tournaments. And one of those being the Boys and Girls Club of America, we have been entrusted to build out their ecosystem for gaming and couldn't be more excited. Um, you know, there's a great opportunity here to, you know, affect change. We've always tried to affect change in everything that we've done from the Atlanta Braves event for charity, um, COVID, uh, another music uh, experience with gaming, mm -hmm. and everything that we've done has had that affect change mentality, drive donations, drive awareness, and that's just another way that we can do that. And I, and I can touch on that. Yeah, um, from a from a business standpoint, we learned a lot from COVID. Um, we, we raised a million meals. We, we we had a lot of good things that happened for the community. Um, account wise, like as he as he was mentioning too, um, without getting into specific details, I, I can say that white labeling of of the platform is going to be a massive, massive, massive uh, opportunity for us, as we're seeing with certain clients, individuals, celebrities. Uh, gaming is not unique. Like it's, it's one thing. It's kind of like poker. You, you understand there's a set of rules and, and, and define gaming's quite the opposite. Mind you, one game could say me and you are playing each other. The next game could say it's me, you and us are playing each other, but the rules are this and the rules are this. We're trying to simplify all of that so that people don't have to ask any questions when they start. Um, and most importantly, 
It's not just about our platform. So if a, I'm going to throw out a hypothetical so that this doesn't get come back to me, but if a ninja or a LeBron James or someone massive wants to host their own gaming tournament with their own brand and their own rules, they can do that by using uh, services that we offer, kind of similar to uh, what Amazon would do for other, other third-party companies. Mm-hmm. So very, very, very excited for that. And um, uh, business-wise and, and account-wise, um, just from a perspective, we, we had 200 celebrities playing in, in COVID, and uh, a lot of them are coming back, I, I would say, um, and, and playing in tournaments. So Good. very excited. Well, Taylor, all this doesn't happen without a, a lot of talent. Talk to us a little bit about how you guys have had to really add to your management team and some of the strengths and talents that each of those individuals have. Absolutely. Um, you know, we've surrounded ourselves with people smarter than us, <laughs> as, any, true. As, any, rule, as, as any young one. entrepreneur should do. Um, you know, surround yourself with people who can you know, drive the vision that Andrew and I have and strategize the best ways to do that with us mm-hmm. and obviously manage the the future projections of the company. And we've brought on several, you know, very experienced and well-respected individuals to be at the helm of our ship. And um, you know, it starts with our CEO, Tim Perlstein. Um, he's always one that likes to give his background. Um, and I admit most of our, our executives do as well. Um, but, you know, long story short, there, each of our executives, you know, Tim Perlstein, Jennifer Erdman, you know, our chief product officer, Matt Thompson, you know, all the way down to how Lynn. Lynn, our chief revenue officer, we have a great group of experienced CIO. individuals, CIO, mm-hmm. Artem Yarguin. Uh, he is at the helm of the architecture yep. of the online platform with a great group of developers. We have a phenomenal support team and it would support may not be the right word because they really drive key significant areas with what we're doing. Like Valerie Moore, she, her experiences with Facebook and consumer insights. We always try to drive everything we do and ground it in data and understand what, our product is in relation to what the market needs and, you know, having those insights is absolutely massive. And then we've got Taylor Ann, who is our director of business operations, who makes sure we do everything in line and keep ourselves accountable and yep. always are getting back to work. Basically from a small perspective of the management team and their background, you know, the, I, 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 it would take us too long to give backstories on, on Tim, Jennifer and everyone, but I would say in a short uh, sweet, you know, nut, nutshell approach is that um, they have led uh, multiple, multiple uh, companies, whether it be uh, working from Yahoo to, or to AT and T or raise or selling companies at, at, at billion dollar valuations. Um, th- their valuable insight and leadership, we could only be grateful to have, and um, you know that we're just grateful that they that they all see an incredible vision. Um, you know, whether it's them, we have people that have had key executive positions at Facebook, ESPN, AT&T, NBC Universal, NBC Universal uh, uh, I'm missing one really. Jen- Jennifer led yep. AT&T youth marketing, which is extremely beneficial to what we're doing here. Mm-hmm. She understands the, she the application of product as it relates to youth. And that's extremely important as we try to, you know, be a... You know, online platform that, as Andrew said, is all inclusive. So we want it to be for the right reasons, and we can position this with Gather, our gaming platform. You know, it's all inclusive, mm-hmm. and that ability to understand like where the youth is going and how the youth is going to be using this product is, you know, it's extremely insightful. And you know, we, she's also a member of the Atlanta Esports Alliance. She's a board member for them, and. That experience in Atlanta, we can talk about Atlanta too a little bit, and it being a hub for esports. Absolutely, just down the road, two miles is High Res Studio, that's right. mm-hmm. and they're a quarter billion dollar e- uh, game developer. So, yeah, I mean, I can I can talk about that. I actually hold a a, a position at, at I mean at, at, at DreamHack. So, I mean, you know, I can I guess I can talk about the Atlanta esports uh, scene a little bit um, as it pertains to our management group and and everything. I think we're u- uniquely positioned in a way. 
both from a city taking our own company out of it, and then I'm going to put it back in at the end of the st- sentence. From a city that has incentivized esports, it's it's part of the film tax credit, so you know, it's very unique um, from a tax credit standpoint. Um, nothing like it in any other state except maybe California and Arizona. Hollywood. Hollywood. We yeah. have the Hollywood I mean, of the South here. We, yeah, but we, but we it's have Hollywood, but they have the name. Louisiana was big, and I then they it dropped is. it. Yes. Uh, I think but yeah, was... Georgia's, Georgia's by far the, the best state yeah. in terms of turning that into capital. Exactly. Right. And they, and they, and, and esports, they made it so welcoming for that in terms of loop, you know, uh, uh, keywords and, 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 and what is allowed and what's, what's not considered. And, um, it just made it very tenable to do business here as we're finding out from a lot of big brands. Um, uh, as I always tell everyone from why it pertains to us and how we can really help here is, is while we've been doing things that affect the global skate, you know, whether it's Ninja or Gronkowski, we are taking a very serious foothold in Atlanta. It's why when we talk about Jennifer Erdman and her her role on the Atlanta Esports Alliance, that that is basically the this the sports council. Right, the, the and super, she's here, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right here. Um, majority of our team is here. We have some that whether it's Lynn Kravetsky or Lynn, uh, Lynn from from New York, uh, Matt from San Francisco, but. We have a, a nucleus. Uh, Tim very, is in Austin. Tim's in Austin. Taylor Ann's in Austin. Valerie's in Austin. That's and that's that's yeah. We're, just, uh, we're at Georgia and Texas and California contingent with Flair yeah. in New York. Yes, but um, you know, it, it, it's just to close that out. I think the the value of both their experience from a local level also to their corporate level has been in, incredibly invaluable in us getting instant credibility and in working in, in, in areas um, and. Um, yeah, I can't speak enough. I can't heap enough praise for for people in that in that in that area here in Atlanta. So, and then at some point in time, uh, Taylor, we were talking about the the idea of of laying over a cryptocurrency type platform into our gaming platform, and uh, the problem, as I understand it, that that solves is is for the players themselves, because then they can come in, they can play, but then there are tokens, there are rewards are transferable uh, across the platform and ultimately can be converted back to U.S. dollars. Right, a centralized... So that, can be, that can be very attractive. Yeah, a centralized virtual currency is definitely useful as it relates to, you know, uh, on-platform wagers. You know, you can go in and I can bet you, Roger, that I can beat you in Madden. I might have to give you a few points, but... We can go set that up on Gather, and there's an opportunity for you know people to have their their bank, and then also you know use that to compete or connect. You can uh, an iteration, and the roadmap is to you know allow for the tournament organizer, the person that would go on to create a tournament that a user would go then join and compete in. For those tournaments that are being created, we consider those a type of content. And you see people on Instagram, you know, putting out memes, and that content is extremely valuable. People are consuming that content. People are engaging with that content. If you create a tournament, people are consuming, entering, engaging with that content. But tournament organization as it stands is not necessarily a area where people are monetizing in esports right now, where individuals like a streamer on Twitch would be monetizing their content because they create it and then they distribute it. We would like to create the model where we can enable tournament organizers to be a creator and therefore turning that creatorship into a profession because there are, Andrew is a tournament organizer for Mm -hmm. us, for, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the many responsibilities, but um, tournament organization is a I, I recognized out. position and job and career right now. Yeah, I can come out and say it. Um, my past experiences, you know, was was TMing um, and tournament adminning the first uh, debut of TBS's uh, uh, TV show on Friday nights at 9 p.m. E League. Um, uh, it was my start in esports a couple years ago, um, so I. It was it was fun seeing that you know the red button we're live and all that fun stuff and um, but but getting serious for a second um, the the tournament admin administration is probably something that I think from a from you know, just going back to it from crypto going back to it from virtual currency or anything 
I think the, the the team that figures out how to make it simplified for the user, I'll just take myself out of it because I want to answer that myself by saying something. But I will say unbiasedly that uh, the team that answers that question will have complete and utter um, adoption and buy-in from the gaming community. Because as it stands, just a small stat to throw to people out there that are listening, 400 million people play gar- tournaments uh, each quarter, 400 million. And only two million play on platforms because they're fearful that it's it's not you know in intrusive. But what we've noticed is that um, if you give the power back to the creators, uh, their audience fan base trumps all of that. And these people want to create and engage. If I'm a fan of someone, the first thing I want to do is play with that someone. And so if you're telling me I can play with them in a tournament, I can do these things. It's a flywheel model. If you've heard of that, meaning we help one area, the other business keeps going, and it keeps. It, oh, it keeps uh, spinning around like a wheel. So we're we're very excited for for that approach. And um, I just from a tournament admin straight standpoint, I can't speak enough, and I'm trying to be coy about how valuable that is. Um, it's the reason we have certain connections in the industry. It's the reason that the number one game in the world worked with us and not any other platform. Just purely, you know, purely out of we understand that if that com- concept and cognitive uh, function of tournament administration. Um, and it's something I'm very excited to say our team is, I, I'll just come out, I think we're the, I think if, if there was an area, I think we're the best at that. So, um, of understanding what the need of the customer is, whether it's an elite or an amateur. So, I'll, and then if the platform can be highly successful, then we have the data. Oh yeah. I'm, I mean, it, you, you, it, you wouldn't just have data. You would have, st- you know what the, the the users, these marketing companies have been grasping for is data that's valuable to them as users. What's more valuable than people with expendable income? Watching Twit, um, I could rattle off stats where user watchers of esports have higher expendable income than anything not named um, like football. Like they, they, they fall right behind football in terms of span, uh, fan spend. So they, their data is valuable to a marketer. They know that they can buy products to certain companies. Um, as you see, the Navy has dropped all marketing spend for anything not named esports. Mm-hmm. So they're not buying print and ad revenue anymore. They're not going in the paper and saying, join the Navy. It's all in video game advertising. So the data is becoming definitely important because we need to see who's valuable to you as a metric, who's valuable to, to you, your brand, and or does this, is this a good fit? Um, that we would be able to have all that data for the user, like all of it. So when they register to the site from a brand perspective... Um, the data would be would be imperative. So, and, and on the other side of that as well, data is important for us to better the platform, understanding mm-hmm. how our users are using the platform and how we can create a better product ultimately for those users. So, and, and what else they want? Exactly. Yeah. So, understanding any, where their users. Any flows idea? Are going. Any idea how much of the uh, gaming population is male? What percent? It's about 60, 60 40 right now. Yeah, it's sixty forty. Surprisingly. Okay, so that's not as high as I would have thought. Right. Well, you see it more skewed to the male side when you get to a console, like when you're playing Xbox, Mm -hmm. PC, or PlayStation, but female gamers um, migrate more towards mobile gaming, and they play a lot of games on their phone. And those, as I mentioned, are part of the global esports industry's mobile mobile gaming as well. So... um, and it's just been a, a just a general push, and and I, I applaud and commend people that we that 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 it has been an accepting culture um, more than say maybe back in the '90s or '80s or when gaming was starting out. It may not have been that accepting culture. I would be transparent. Um, we we are light years ahead of. Um, there are more female streamers trending. There are more um, you know female pro gamers now than there ever were before statistically. Um, the, 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 the gap is now for the first time, um, almost better than at certain sports without saying the, the without saying the certain sports I want to say, but the gap there from an earnings ratio, a salary ratio, it's, it's, uh, it's significantly increased. Um, I mean, uh, um, um, decreased in, in ratio and it's, it's equalized, equalized. And then one other point to that, um, just you know how we're trying to uh, you know affect all demographics. Gather the last four three letters of that is her. Gather her. We want to elevate the female gaming population. We want to provide opportunities that are you know engaging and unique for female gaming uh, users. So 
we're really excited to have that ability and it's you know part of the name so we've been thinking about that from the beginning and we, like i said we do have a strong female presence on our management team and on our core so having those insights and making sure that we build it not just for the professional gamer but for all gamers right and then we have the ability to add to the diversity platform with our various communities as well. Correct. And some of the affiliations that we have there. Ab- absolutely. Whether yes. it's colleges, affiliations, clubs, organizations, uh, fans, communities of video games, um, we've seen that communities can spark up overnight with, uh, you know, it, it's, and, and our, our goal is just to cast the net as wide as possible and tell them that they're welcome and, uh, We'll never forget, just a shout out to DreamHack, where Taylor made a reference at the beginning of this podcast that we walked in and saw people connecting for the very first time. That's our ultimate goal. Um, you know, just dumbing it down a little bit is that we, we want to have people gather. We want them to feel welcome and to join and chat with people and, and to have fun. So, so, uh, ab- absolutely, absolutely, um, that, that, that this is a, um, um, you know, from, from, from a understanding of, um, you know, community building and, and just, uh, what Taylor said, focusing on diversity building, um, whether it's HBCUs and their, their, their esports programs jump starting, whether it's, you know, working with the, the minority of, of, uh, you know, people that don't have esports programs like Boys and Girls Club and building them up. Um, that is a big passion project for us. But we, we, we started our company on three straight charity events, um, and, and, it is something we, we want to diversify on and, and build up to those assets as well. So, John, you can see why I'm excited about this company. There's some great opportunities there. Absolutely. We could go on and on. But, uh, guys, we uh, we need to let you get to it, yes. right? So, yes. and, uh, go there's cra- a lot of work to do. But, but Taylor, how would uh, any of our listeners get in touch with you? Uh, you're more than welcome to reach out to me. I always like making a new friend. I am a Southerner at heart. So, Taylor at unitedingaming.com. There you go. And, John at United Gaming as well for me. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Happy to be here. Okay. That's great. Uh, Great. Taylor McDermott, Andrew Smoltz with United in Gaming. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank Thank you, you, John. Folks, just a quick reminder that this show is brought to you by Frazier & Dieter. And Frazier & Dieter is an award-winning international CPA and advisory firm with deep technical expertise and an even deeper dedication to their clients. Their CPAs and advisors believe in investing in relationships to make a difference. For more information, go to FraserDieter.com. Roger, it's been great. Well, thank you, John, and we'll look forward to uh, the next show next month. Okay? Let's do it again. All right. Bye. Thanks. Thanks.